Hey, and welcome back. Time for our Capital Report with CapitalBeatOK.com's Pat McGuigan. Pat, uh, we knew this was going to be a dominant subject uh, this session, the uh, efforts to phase out income tax in Oklahoma. And we saw this past week the Senate did pass a measure, a Senate bill, to phase out the income tax over a 10-year period. Using your crystal ball, I mean, do, do you think this is going to get passed ultimately? Uh, uh, something's going to pass. As you know, uh, there was also... Uh, who would have ever thought we'd be describing as more moderate a proposal yeah. to all at once cut half a percent more from the state income tax? That also passed. So you have the Jolly Vehicle, which is that phase out, and then you have Mike Maisie of Tulsa with a proposal to cut uh, half a percentage. Those are both Senate vehicles, and then you have the House side. So yes, something's going to pass, and this is very fluid. I mean, uh, it, it's hard for me even with the crystal ball, yeah. which is a little burnished right now, yeah. um, uh, to uh, project too much other than just to say it's a dynamic process. So there are a couple of uh, measures in the House, one uh, that have also been passed now. Um, one would phase out over 10 years, one is yeah. not as clear. Um, you know, what are the differences in, uh, with these and what are the concerns from those who oppose these? Yeah, the one that's not as clear that you referred to is the governor's proposal, right. which would probably take 20, some people say 25 to 30 years. So the phase out is a really long mm. period. And then any individual incremental cut, you know, has a 5% trigger, which is frankly kind of high. Uh, in Kansas, they just passed a measure that would cut taxes and put a 3% trigger. So 3 and 5%, that's a big difference. These prior income tax cuts in Oklahoma, the trigger has been 4%. So fluidity in the provisions. Bottom line, both houses have now passed a measure mm -hmm. that would phase it out over a 10-year period and throw away a lot of the exemptions and credits. So if these are enacted, how are they going to affect Oklahomans out there? Well, <clears throat> the critics, uh, people like Scott Inman, you know, point to the fact that it would create what they call a $2 billion hole in the budget. Uh, but even Inman says in the dynamic analysis, a billion of that comes back in net growth to offset the cut uh, because of growth in the state economy. And then, of course, there's room for efficiencies still in government and additional cuts. How would it affect the average Oklahoman? Um, the question is where you lie on the spectrum. There's some people that might see temporary increases, but after 10 years, there's no more tax. Seniors and retirees have already been protected in every vehicle that's out there. Uh, those cuts uh, that were discussed are not going to be taking place because uh, the legislators looked at it and they listened to the response. So those have been taken off the table. This is a clash of vision. People that think that one of the key jobs of government is to take care of the poor. Uh, they're critical of it because they see a potential effect on social programs, although uh, the projections are government would still continue to grow just as it's grown even during uh, the Great Recession. Uh, the net size of Oklahoma government and what's being spent has actually increased. Well, this um, dovetails with this next subject, which is uh, the tax credits. And uh, I know you've reported on this quite a bit. But there are a number of tax credits and many that have been on the chopping block here. Um, so ultimately, what do you see in the future of these credits? Um, which ones may truly be in jeopardy here? Uh, it's hard to say. Let me just quickly say that the transferability provisions, which you'll remember uh, Representative dank has been very critical yes. of the ability to transfer these credits around. Uh, the transferability has been restored, but it's still something that may go away. Um, I'd say the investment tax credits, uh, which took a lot of critical, detailed scrutiny uh, during the process that Dank and Maisie led, I think they're probably still at risk. We still could see most of them ended, depending on the final compromises in terms of how deep of an income tax cut to make. Quality job programs has been insulated comparatively. It's regarded as a positive program. We've done a little bit of reporting, my colleague Stacy Martin at Capital Beat OK, uh, pointing out some flaws in terms of clawbacks and in terms of actual net job increases, at least in the case of uh, Dell Computers. So quality jobs program is probably not on the table, but it's an example of how there are limits to how effective these things can really be. So you are going to see limits on tax credits in the future 
a statutory measure that I think will prevail carried easily in both chambers and will actually also go to the state constitution so that there's tougher standards in the future. That I think is at least going to happen. I think a lot of this other is still in play. All right. We know you'll continue to report on it. You can read more about these and other topics at capitalbeatok.com. For Pat McGuigan, I'm Alex Cameron. Have a great Saturday.